Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Menopause Metaphors, Symptoms, and Solutions. I'm Victoria Leota, and I'm a doctor of acupuncture at Inner Source Health. And I want to thank everyone for being here today at their lunchtime. It's like a little lunch and learn. We're gonna talk about menopause and uh, some of actually the archetypes more so than the metaphors. Um, before we go any further, I just wanna get a show of hands and see if everybody could hear me still, okay? I believe so, I think everything's good. Good, okay, let me get back to sharing. <laughs> We live and we learn, right? That's what it's all about. And what we're gonna be talking about today is all we've learned through the years, um, which is a good thing. And, um, you know, I, before I get started, when I came up with the title of uh, Menopause Metaphors, Symptoms and Solutions, you know, of course, uh, symptoms are there. We know all those. We'll talk about some of those. And there are solutions. So that's the good news. Uh, but when I chose the word metaphors, I guess that was a bit of um, maybe not the best choice of words to use. Um, a metaphor actually is a comparison of two things that, you know, seem to be unrelated, but are in a way. Um, and I'm going to be talking more so about archetypes, you know, what we think of when we think of a menopausal woman or a middle-aged woman or a post-menopausal woman, um, and how that's maybe changed a little bit through uh, different traditions and in the past and how it's uh, changed, you know, into where we are today. But um, before we get started, I do have a metaphor I can share. When I was setting up earlier today and uh, making sure everything was working and the slides were all together, uh, I popped something in the toaster oven. I said, I have to have a little something something to eat before we get started. And the next thing, you know, uh, th there was smoke <laughs> and uh, the fire uh, alarm, you know, the, 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 the smoke detector was going off, beep, 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 fire, fire. And I went and I just went over and opened up the windows, turned on the ceiling fan. And there you go. I look at that as a little metaphor for those of us that are sometimes feeling a little hot these days. Okay. So yeah, open the windows, turn on the fan. And there was my little metaphor. So I just wanted to share that with you. It's kind of a little funny metaphor, I would say. So um, let's get started. Okay, there we go. All right, so menopause, what is it? We're all familiar, familiar with it. It's really the end of the menstrual cycle. Um, you know, as we approach our 40s, uh, actually into our 40s, and as we approach our 50s, you know, our cycle tends to change. And that's, you know, quite normal. The, you know, the period might become a little irregular. This is um, what we would call perimenopause, if you look a little further down, um, where we skip months and the uh, period becomes shorter. That's very typical, you know, nothing to be concerned about. If there are any questions or any uh, unusual pain or symptoms involved, it'd be good to talk to your gynecologist. But um, the end of the menstrual cycle is what we call the period of uh, menopause. And usually it's diagnosed at after 12 months of not having a period. Then you say, you're going through menopause and you know not perimenopause and the average age is about 51 years give or take about five years some people start a little bit earlier some a little later you know just like you know the beginning of the period but um that's it you know in a nutshell as far as a, a definition of menopause um you know when we think of menopause we think of different things we think of um you know symptoms we have uh, and uh, maybe what a menopausal woman, you know, comes to mind, what, what you imagine in your mind if you're not there yet. And, you know, sometimes it's not always positive. Sometimes it is positive. I mean, things are changing and, and coming back. We'll talk about that more. But I know when I was a kid, if I thought of a menopausal woman, I would probably get a picture like this. Okay, now this is my great grandmother, Nancy. Nancy Rousseau is her name. And, um, you know, an elderly woman. Now she's way past her menopausal years, you know, in this picture. But I wanted to put this up because I think, you know, in the past, you know, not maybe a few decades ago, we really thought of menopausal woman as like, you know, old and, you know, their life was not that much to look forward to. And that's really changed, you know? So I want to talk about a lot of positives, but I do have to say, you know, this woman, when I look at her, first of all, she's well past menopause. This was taken on her hundredth birthday, God bless her. Um, <laughs> and she had 17 children, 
in that lifetime. You know, and I think 17 children, if there's anybody that wants to go through menopause, it was Nancy Rousseau, who you're looking at. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, I just wanted to say that, you know, times have changed and we don't always think of an elderly woman. I mean, you know, women in their 50s, 50 is the new 30, 40 is the new 20. I mean, we all look, you know, we're all, you know, more active. Uh, we've had careers or continue to have careers. We take care of ourselves, um, you know, through healthy lifestyle choices. And, um, you know, the image of the menopausal woman has really changed. So let's talk about some of those archetypes, okay? Um, I have a picture of the moon here because uh, in triple goddess um, theory, I guess we'll call it our practice. Uh, they use the moon to go through the phases of a woman in her fertility years. Uh, the waxing moon would be the maiden, the younger lady. The full moon is the mother, you know, the nurturer. And the waning moon they called the crone. Now, when I think of a crone, it, it's not always the um, most, uh, I guess, um, uh, would you say, um, flattering word. But, you know, other words come to mind, too, when I think of crone, I think of hag, but hag really comes from the word hagia or uh, hagia, meaning sacred one. And, you know, older women or women, you know, not even older, you know, should be looked more for their wisdom. And in Native American traditions and other ancient traditions, they really honored women in their menopausal years and postmenopausal years. Um, you know, it's really when you move into your time of wisdom, you share your ideas, you share your experiences. I mean, many of you uh, may be grandparents. Uh, what's better than being a grandparent? I always said to my parents, you know, you're much better grandparents than you were as parents, you know, meaning they're I don't know, they just seem so so much kinder and uh, optimistic and uh, even happier. What can I say, you know, <laughs> being a parent can be stressful. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a time to share your wisdom and these um, native tradition, or excuse me, these ancient traditions really honored women for their uh, wisdom and what they had to offer through experience, you know, good and bad uh, to others. Um, now there's another archetype that I came across when I was doing some research. And there was an article written uh, by a woman who said that the archetype of the queen is very good because it really is that missing link in chain of life where the more modern menopausal woman sits, you know? And when we say queen, it's not so much, you know, the ruler, you know, not necessarily like, um, <laughs> well, I've been thinking of the devil uh, wears Prada, uh, was it a, not uh, Meryl Streep, you know, not, not the ruling, you know, uh, domineering, you know, a boss type of female, uh, but someone who's really um, competent, you know, actualize some of the words here, organized, efficient, ethical, and fair. And, you know, it's a place where you can, as the queen, you could go inside and say, yeah, I'm more confident. I've had some, you know, hard times, but I've learned from them and I can share those experiences. So I think, you know, going back to, you know, where we had the, um, the full moon and the waning moon of the crone, I think there's that queen that sits right in between those two. And that's what uh, this woman was referring to. Um, you know, you think, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking of different images um, that come to mind. But, you know, I think, you know, menopause really is a good time to be that queen unto yourself, to go inside and say, you know, sometimes I say, yeah, I, I, you know, enough is enough. I could really, you know, tell you're pulling a fast one and that's good. And, and maybe you have that confidence to say that, <laughs> you know, in the past you didn't. But also you could go inside and say, um, you know, maybe there's a childhood dream that was never fulfilled. You know, maybe a hobby. Uh, you might've wanted to be a dancer or a musician and menopause, you know, you might be retired, you know, that's post-menopause, but, you know, when, as you get into your menopausal years, it's a good time to look back and say, is there something that I can do now? I mean, look where we are in these days, you know, with the quarantine, with um, things being on pause, a lot of people are learning new skills, you know, maybe learning to cook in a different uh, culture, you know, like Japanese cooking, or um, like I said, playing an instrument, or, uh, you know, going back and reading some books that you never finished. Um, and I want to share a quote from Women Who Run, the Wolf, Run With the Wolves. 
And it's if we live as we breathe, taking and releasing, we cannot make mistakes. So just take a breath. I mean, I wanted to take a breath now. I'm just going to take a breath now. Just, a, just be more grounded. Okay. And, um, you know, no, it's a time to go back and explore things that maybe you had to put on pause, just like we are doing now. And uh, not be afraid of making mistakes. I mean, when I look back, I think, you know, there are times where I said, oh, I wish I had done things differently. Um, but when I come to something like a roadblock these days, uh, something I say, oh, gosh, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I look back and say, I, over, I, I got over something many years ago. I did the steps. I might have struggled a little bit, but I lived through it. So it's good to look back at things that you, you know, got over, moved through, so challenging things, and you have that strength. And I always remind myself, if I live through that, I can get through this. So, you know, don't worry about making mistakes if you do, you know, have the time to try new things. And some words come to mind, you're probably thinking, um, you know, I'm sure you're all thinking of different words that come to mind as you uh, grow into your wisdom. Uh, confidence, you know, that's what I've been talking about, just having the confidence to try new things, speak up for yourself, maybe uh, go back to school if you have time, if your children are out of the house, or if they're in college themselves, uh, there's so many things you can learn online, um, on YouTube. These days we're all doing that. I mean, you're here today, you know, so that's great. You know, and you have that courage. Um, you know, there's other things, creativity I talked about, uh, you know, you finding those things that you uh, thought you maybe didn't have time for in the past and picking up where you left off on a hobby. Um, I was gonna say travel. <laughs> Travel's kind of on pause now too. Hopefully we'll be doing that soon. But um, there's a lot of things to explore as we get into our menopausal years. Okay, so now you're probably looking at all these positive words and thinking, but wait a second, <sighs> you know, <laughs> I'm feeling it too. So I wanna talk about some of those symptoms. And, uh, you know, I talked about, you know, the uh, toaster oven going off and, uh, you know, all the, the, the heat created and, you know, as an analogy to uh, hot flashes, night sweats, which are probably the two most common, uh, especially the hot flashes more so than night sweats, but the two most common symptoms of menopause that many of us experience. And it's really due to hormonal changes, drop in estrogen and progesterone. Also, testosterone tends to drop during menopause too. So if your libido is a little lower, it's probably due to the, the lowering of testosterone. Uh, vaginal dryness also. And before we go any further, I'm kind of going to drop, a, drop a, excuse me, <laughs> jump ahead um, with the vaginal dryness because uh, I was uh, given um, some advice of a good um, oil that's made by Blue Poppy that can relieve vaginal dryness, dryness in lieu of uh, like a KY jelly or an Astroglide. Uh, it's more natural and it's called, um, I have to bring it up now, I just received it. It's from Blue Poppy. It's called, it's a yin oil, natural yin oil, I believe is the, the name of it. It's made by Blue Poppy and you can find that online. Um, if you have a problem finding that, please uh, contact me at the uh, information given at the end of this uh, discussion. I'll be happy to help you find that. Also dry eyes, dry skin. Uh, coconut butter is very good for using on the skin, very natural. It has uh, medium chain fatty acids. Many of you uh, know it for cooking. It's also good, can be applied to take uh, makeup off. And I've even been told um, that it made uh, someone's eyelashes grow back and fill in better. So it can do that too. So when we talk about all these symptoms, we see there's heat, dryness, and in Chinese medicine, it's known as yin deficiency heat. I'm an acupuncturist, so I couldn't have a discussion without mentioning some uh, theory here. So as women or all people have yin and yang in them, yin being the more nurturing aspect, yang being the more active aspect of life. Everything has yin and yang, not necessarily equal, but we try to keep it harmonized as this picture shows. Uh, yin is responsible for uh, the cooling too. 
Things that are cold and cooling in nature are known as yin substances. Things that are warmer or hot are known as yang. Now, as women age, we tend to, with the hormonal changes, on the Chinese medicine side, we say we might be, become more yin deficient. Now, what does that mean? Now, yin being the cooling element, it means we become deficient in it or we have less of that cooling element. So we tend to feel warm, <laughs> okay? I guess that's the best way I could describe it. And it's right there in the title, yin deficiency heat. So we start having hot flashes, night sweats, you know, uh, heat, you know, causes dryness, so the vaginal dryness, dry eyes, dry skin, and so forth, okay? Those are just some of the symptoms that you may have. Uh, so what we want to do is nurture the yin and clear the heat. That's the uh, treatment principle in Chinese medicine. And along with that, there's also some other recommendations. Um, as I've said, in acupuncture and in acupressure, we would uh, use points. Any of you who've had acupuncture with me know that, uh, you know, I insert the uh, needles when I do the acupuncture in certain areas. So I would be using points that would be clearing heat and uh, nourishing the yin, okay? And you can do that with acupressure too. Okay, so I just jumped ahead a little bit. But for the hot flashes and night sweats, there's just some home remedies that are real simple. I would say avoid caffeine. Coffee, sometimes I have a cup of coffee and suddenly I feel very warm. It could just bring on, uh, you know, a hot flash. Alcohol also, especially red wine I find. So, you know, try to avoid alcohol too if you're having uh, night sweats or hot flashes. Smoking, of course, causes so many symptoms and it's heat. Just think of it so simple, it's heat when you smoke. Um, and I would add cooling foods, watermelon, Cucumbers cooling, we always say cool as a cucumber, and also mint. Peppermint is very good for just cooling in general. Uh, so you could add some mint maybe to a salad or a smoothie, and it can help, uh, you know, with the, that, those hot flashes. Um, as far as herbals go, black cohosh is uh, recommended. We have it at our herbal dispensary at Inner Source. So if you're interested in that, you can contact me. Uh, it's it's proven to help with hot flashes and night sweats. Um, or if you're interested, you could uh, see an herbalist for a custom herbal formula. You could talk to me about that. Uh, I'd be happy to uh, do a consultation with anybody who's interested. And as I said, acupuncture and acupressure are very good at helping with the symptoms of uh, yin deficiency, in particular, all the hot signs and drying signs that I had mentioned. Okay, so let's let's have some interaction. <laughs> okay, we gotta take a little break. I'm gonna take a little break from talking, or maybe I'll just have to talk through this. Let's see. Um, but the Ren channel is pictured here. It goes down the midline of the body. You know, the, actually, it starts. You know, it's it starts at the bottom and it works its way up. Actually, but um, I showed a picture of the chest and the abdomen here, and. Um, what I'd like to do, you can do this with me if you want. This is something nice to, to do to open up the Ren channel. And, um, you know, it's, as I said, the, the Ren channel is the source of yin. So we want to nourish that yin, tonify, build up that yin that we're starting to, that's becoming diminished. Okay, so acupressure and self-massage can be effective. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. What you could do is uh, we use circular digital pressure with the index and middle fingers. I even use my hands are small, uh, the, the ring finger too. But you could use just, you know, these two fingers are easy enough. And what you want to do is just start at, um, if you can see, I'm not going, it, it, there's a point on the throat. I'm sorry about that. But start right in between the clavicle here, the collarbones. And you could just do some circles. You know, I like to go towards the heart. I don't know if you could see how I'm doing here, just with my fingers. And I'm going to move down. I usually do like three or four. You don't have to worry about the points. The points are just there. Um, you know, those are acupuncture, acupressure points. But just, you know, do circles as I'm doing down your chest. You can go underneath your bra and all the way down through your abdomen. And I find this to be very relaxing. It's also good for um, palpitations and anxiety that you might have uh, if you have menopausal symptoms or just anxiety in general. You don't have to be going through menopause as we know to uh, have anxiety. Uh, so I just wanted to show you that um, if you're interested, you can um, 
ask for a copy of the slides and I can send you this slide just so you have the diagram to show how to uh, open up the end. Um, I just want to take a quick look at some of these questions. Let's see. Is early menopause, is early menopause genetic? You know, I don't know about the genetics specifically. When I say genetics, I mean the actual gene you carry on like, like, a, like a BRCA2, but um, I would say it's familial. Um, if your mother went through an early menopause, you probably have a chance of uh, going through menopause also, um, you know, early, uh, but not always. Um, my mother went through an earlier menopause and uh, I haven't experienced that. So uh, I really would say it's not necessarily genetic, but you know, like anything else, look to your parents, you know, especially your mother, maybe some aunts, and they might uh, give you an idea of what's to come and what to look for. Uh, as far as clockwise or counterclockwise with, let me go back to um, the, uh, the massage. Um, I like to go, I usually go uh, towards the heart, so that would be considered um, counterclockwise, but you could go clockwise too. Really, we just want to open up this area and do some you know, self-massage, okay? Um, this I put in because I know a lot of people like to use uh, essential oils, and you can use them to relieve hot flashes, and the three biggies are clary sage, Peppermint, I had mentioned peppermint's cooling, and geranium. Now, these can be used individually or you can blend them together. And um, I like to just put two or three drops on a cotton ball and you know you can breathe it in, or you can put a couple of drops on the soles of your feet and massage them in, and they tend to ease uh, hot flashes. Um, I also saw online that um, you could blend the three of these together. And this is a recipe down here. I'll let everybody look at this, where you can blend the three oils together to make a sp spray mist. So you blend 20 drops of the clary sage oil, which you can find in uh, an aromatherapy shop. Uh, Wild by Nature might have it uh, online. Um, I like the Young Living. That's, you know, I, I don't sell it, but I prefer that. But I know there's other uh, brands out there, but uh, look for something, you know, a, a pure uh, essential oil. But the Clary Sage oil, you use 20 drops of, you use 10 drops of peppermint oil and 20 drops of geranium oil, and you put them in a small uh, dark glass bottle. Um, I'd say dark glass bottle, like a blue glass, just so the light doesn't get in and tamper with the oils themselves. Uh, and fill the rest of the bottle which, with which, with witch hazel. Now, witch hazel is an astringent, and you can find that in the drugstore. It's usually over in the um, first aid section. It might be near uh, the peroxide and uh, hydrogen peroxide and uh, the, uh, the alcohol section. And what you do is you shake the bottle well, mix everything, and you could use it as a mist on um, your neck, your body, back, uh, your back, uh, and, you know, of course on your face, but of course be careful of your eyes, keep your eyes closed when spraying. So I'll just leave this up for a moment if you want to copy that down, but it's basically, um, you know, two to one to two is the ratio of the oil. So you're using half as much peppermint as you do the uh, clary sage and the geranium. So it would be 20 drops, 10, and 20 drops of the geranium, 10 of the peppermint, excuse me, and 20 drops of the geranium oil. Okay, now there's other symptoms, ah. <laughs> insomnia and mood swings and irritability. And those all tend to go hand in hand. If you're irritable you're, and having mood changes, uh, it's probably gonna be difficult to sleep too. You probably have some stress in the body. So you wanna do things that um, help relieve stress like meditation, you know, maybe taking you know, a hot bath before you go to sleep. Um, there's good herbal teas that could help with ins insomnia. And also of course, you know, acupuncture and um, you know, massage is good. And there's some herbal formulas too. Uh, weight gain is another symptom. I'm going to talk about exercise in a moment. And along with uh, fatigue, osteoporosis, uh, and urinary symptoms. But there's hope, <laughs> okay? And there's probably more symptoms too we, we all know of. But let's talk about some solutions 
uh, just regular, you know, recommendations for a healthy lifestyle. Make sure you drink plenty of H2O, you know, plenty of water. Water is a yin substance. I talked about, you know, women becoming less yin as we age. So you want to make sure you're getting plenty of water. Uh, the recommendation is to take your body weight, half, half it, and get that, that half amount of your weight in ounces. So if you weigh, say, 100 pounds, which you probably don't, and you have it, it'll be 50. I'm just using 100, for example. Okay, let's say 150, and it'll be 75 ounces. Okay, um, and exercise is very important, very good for maintaining weight, as we know. It's also good for osteoporosis, the weight-bearing exercise, like lifting weights, um, doing uh, the treadmill, running that, that that you know, motion of the pounding builds the bones. Uh, and also Tai Chi, if you wanna do something a little bit more relaxing. Tai Chi actually is an inter internal martial art. Okay, so it, it takes its motions actually from other martial arts like Kung Fu, Karate, if you look at it, you know, some of the, the motions that you see people doing in the park, they actually, if you speed them up, you know, it's more of a external martial art. But Tai Chi is very um, good for uh, menopause and all, all through the age. But I find it very good for, you know, women who get to be uh, in their 50s, 60s, because it's a little less um, rigorous, I would say. But it's most effective. Yoga also <laughs> is very good. Yoga stretching and, uh, you know, but I, I know many women I've talked to, so I, I, I just can't do yoga. I can't, I just can't do it because when they think of yoga, this is, they think of this. I mean, <laughs> you know, and sometimes I think of that too. I'm like, I could never do that. I'm not a 20 something. There's no way that I'm going to be able to do the things that the other people in this class is going to do. But what you can do is you can pick your favorites, you know, get a video, go on, you know, YouTube is great. Pick the ones that work for you and try to do them every day. And you'll notice a difference when I do, you know, downward facing dog, the cobra, just the simple ones that I like, the, the pose of the child. It makes a difference in my day. It's a great way to start your day, just along with, you know, regular stretching. You know, stretch. <laughs> I'm going to stretch myself, okay? Just reach up. If you can do that. And then the other arm, ah, makes a difference. Stretching will keep you feeling young. I was told this when I was 25. Someone had told me, if you get to the point where you don't have time to go to the gym and work out, exercise, run, whatever it may be doing, stretch, it'll keep you feeling young. And I really think it does. It really opens up the muscles, improves circulation, you know, loosens up the joints and so forth. So uh, stretching is something that we can definitely do for the rest of our lives. Uh, I have some other recommendations for some of the other symptoms I talked about. I had mentioned the, um, the blue poppy uh, yin oil for the vaginal dryness, but um, with incontinence, you know, we many of us experience stress incontinence, you know, you laugh, you cough loud, suddenly, you know, a little something. So uh, Kegel exercises can help strengthen the pelvic floor. If you have any uh, further problems with the pelvic floor, especially pain, there are pelvic floor specialists. Uh, I know of two on Long Island um, that I can recommend depending on where you live, if you're interested, but uh, there are professionals that specialize in the pelvic floor, which is good to know. Some people didn't real, don't realize that. For memory, um, walnuts are actually good. When you look at a walnut, it actually looks like a little brain. Some foods look like what they're good for. So walnuts can help with memory. And also keeping your mind active, reading, maybe taking a course, um, if you have time, take a college course or just like a continuing education class or, you know, the town many times have, um, you know, classes where you can, you can learn a new language, learn some computer skills. You know, keep your mind active and it'll help with memory. And I already mentioned osteoporosis, the weight bearing exercise is very important and good. And these are all natural remedies. I'm, I'm not talking about any, um, you know, medications. I'm not that type of a doctor, uh, but these are things that you can do. Um, if you're not taking any med medications or, you know, also to supplement them. And of course, acupuncture, being an acupuncturist, I've mentioned acupuncture before, very good for relaxation, very good for pain 
you know, uh, relieving pain, pain control. Uh, so the same thing with herbs. Herbs very good for uh, soothing the hot flashes, you know, and massage. Who can't wait to get a massage once this is all over here? We have to get out. That's one of the first things I think many of us are going to do is go out and get a massage. And I'm also a massage therapist. Just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. And I have many years experience doing massage also. So it'd be great to see many of you again or you know some new people please uh you know give a call and make an appointment we will be uh, opening up soon enough um we all hope for that you know we all, we're all hoping to get back to uh our lives um our live live you know out there in the world too but uh in the meantime you know, we, I am, uh, let me just move ahead. I am available for consultations over Zoom or FaceTime, and I could do guided acupressure with people, but I just want to go back to this slide because before we end, uh, and I'll look at the questions also, I want to leave you all with some quotes that I came across while I was doing some research on the archetypes. Uh, the first one is, charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. That's actually Proverbs 31. That's a mistake that I, <laughs> I made, um, but it's from the Bible. And uh, charm is deceptive at any age. Beauty is fleeting now. Sure it is, but you know what? There's that inner beauty. And I really believe, you know, menopausal women these days, we, we, we're not, you know, the older woman of the past, but we still have that wisdom from the traditions and you know we might have a little touch of gray but you know a little uh natural type of i have it right here uh hair products can help that okay this is herbitant i don't sell this i i don't i'm not really advertising for them but anything of this nature could be found in uh health food stores or well by nature if you live in the huntington area um, it's paraben free and ammonia free. That's what I would suggest for hair dye too. Okay. Um, here's a nice quote from a song. It's called, I'm, it's, uh, it says, I'm so glad I'm not 20 anymore. I'm going to sing it for a moment. Okay. I'm so glad I'm not 20 anymore. I don't need to knock down someone else's door. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, that says a lot. It's great to be 20, but when I look back, I don't know, the age I am at the present is always best. Um, and, you know, like a younger person, I don't feel like I have to be thinking about what other people want, um, you know, going inside and saying, what, what do I want, having that, you know, confidence. Uh, and also, there's another quote. Now, this was from um, Dr. Uh, Jean Shinoda Belen. We can laugh together at how absurd the world is. And <laughs> we know that now. Uh, we can still whine, but laugh at the same time. And um, I want to leave everyone with just something that my father told me many years ago. We were sitting around the dinner table and talking about like what age, um, I don't know. I don't know how it came up, but he said, my favorite age was 50. And I was really surprised. So I was maybe a teenager at the time. Or, or probably in my 20s. And um, he said, at that age, I really felt like I knew who I was. I wasn't too afraid of where I was going. And I just felt comfortable in my own self. And I'll always remember that. So uh, for those of you who are younger than 50, you have something to look forward to, I hope. And those of you who are in your 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, you know there's much more of life than uh, what we've been told maybe decades ago, okay? So thank you very much. I just wanna move on. These are some references uh, that I used to put this um, webinar together, some links. And uh, I mentioned the, I think I mentioned the book, uh, Women Who Run With the Wolves. Um, I haven't read it, but it was recommended to me as I was putting this together. And it might be something that uh, many of you are interested in reading. Uh, let's see. And as I said, I'm available for consultations in acupressure, guided acup acupressure at Inner Source Health, uh, doing things online at this time, um, opening up soon enough. So if you're interested in acupuncture, I'd be happy to help you with that. And the number here is listed. My email is listed if you have any questions. And uh, just some, you know, here's the Inner Source link 
for the website and we have uh, here Facebook and Instagram and all that is all listed here. But I want to see, I thought there were some questions. I'm going to just bear with me for a moment. Uh, ah, here we go. Yes, this is recorded and you can watch it over again. And like I said, if you have any questions, you could please, you know, contact me by my email, Victoria at innersourcehealth.com and I can answer any of your questions. Okay. So um, there's another question in the um, chat it says, what was the vaginal dryness again? Uh, it's made by the, the oil is made by Blue Poppy. Two words, blue and poppy, P-O-P-P-Y, and you can find it online. And it's called yin, um, it's called yin oil, I believe, okay? Um, sorry, I don't have that for you uh, completely, but if you do a search for yin oil and blue poppy, I'm sure something will be there. Let me write this in the chat box too. Um, Okay, well, thank you so much. I'm glad you all can join me today and um, stay positive, be creative, be uh, relaxed, take a deep breath, and know life is good. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the day.